Hey guys, Solomon here. Hope you're having a great day. I thought in today's video I could give you hippo players an encouragement, and that is not to castle until you have your full hippo setup, right? Until you got that set up, your full hippo setup at move 10, don't even think about castling one side or the other. In most instances, there are, you know, there are some some times where castling can be good, but most of the time in the hippo, you really want to hit the brakes and take your time with castling. And in this video, we're gonna be looking at two games from my guy, Walter Reed, one of my Patreon supporters, one of my patrons, one of my private students who I meet with, uh, you know, on a week to week basis. And also one of my close friends at this point, right? Uh, you know, both of these games are interesting because, you know, I think it really highlights by kind of comparing one versus the other, it really highlights the benefits that you gain by not castling too fast, right? And, and that's kind of weird because most openings, I mean, we want to castle fast, right? Get that pawn in the center, castle, connect the rooks. Da, 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 da. The hippo's a little bit different, right? It kind of it kind of takes a different approach to the opening and to the game of chess as a whole, right? Now, this first game that we're going to cover is one in which Walter simply castled too fast, right? He castled too fast, and he made his king a target because this king had already committed to one side of the board, right? We actually covered this game in a private lesson. We were kind of talking through the ideas. I was sharing with him why I thought it was a mistake, which I'm going to you know be sharing those same ideas with you in this video. And uh, and then after that lesson, he actually, right after that, he had a game in which case uh, his opponent tried a similar thing, but Walter did not castle fast. He kept his king in the center, and the opponent's attack kind of just fizzled out because that king was, was not an easy target, right? That king was still in the center, and it could stay in the center or castle queenside, right? So again, we're going to be looking at both of these games and just keep in mind compare the before and compare the after also let's just let's just take a moment and, and just look at this picture this this was taken by walter okay he took this picture uh he was recently on a trip and uh yeah he took this picture you know of this hippo i've i've been thinking about getting a pet hippo right thinking about getting a pet hippo you know walking around on a leash um you know at, at tournaments and, and you know just just kind of hanging out with my hippo playing you know, playing the hippo against people. Uh, after this picture that I just saw, I don't, I don't really know if I want to pet hippo anymore. I feel like they're kind of dangerous. Um, but if you do know where I can get a pet hippo, please let me know. Okay, that'd be, you know, just let me know. Uh, but all that to say, um, yeah. I mean, if you see the hippo in chess, don't mess with it. But if you, if you ever do see a hippo in real life, just really, really don't mess with it. Okay, so all that to say. Here we go, game one. Uh, we got this move d4. Here Walter going with, with my preferred move order setup of one, two, and three. Just getting that bishop fianchetto fast, getting that pawn on t6. And, and then from here, I mean, your fourth move can be a variety of different things. Uh, but okay, I mean, here black just continues to develop in, a, in an orderly fashion. And uh, okay, now we have this move of castling kingside. This, in my opinion, is a mistake. Because at this point in the game, black is making their king a huge target. Uh, first off, our pieces are not all developed, right? I mean, if you look at the hippo position here, it is a little bit awkward at this point, right? So we don't want to castle right away. We really want to get both of our bishops being shadowed, and we get a, we really want to get all of our pawns, all of our, our six pawns that we use to get to the sixth rank. That way we have more pawn breaks available, right? But by castling this fast, especially when your opponent hasn't castled, this is basically an invitation for white to start attacking like crazy, right? Now, if this king is on g1, right, if white has castled already, then, okay, then it gets a little bit interesting because it's like, is it, you know, is white really going to start going crazy with both of their pawns right in front of their king? Probably not. But if you have a king on e1 or a king that's castled queenside, you really don't want to castle kingside, especially at this stage in the game. You could even argue that you still don't want to castle, even if this king is castled on the king side of the board right so okay we, we have a castle here which is definitely early white now playing h4 walter here could have played the move of h5 but notice that that weakens the g5 square right g5 would become very weak and at that point we're, we're almost kind of playing a crab like setup right so we, we play this move h6 which is usually what you want to do in the hippo but now when we play g5 white is able to sack and uh, it actually turns out that black's okay here. Uh, you know, if you plug it into Stockfish, um, you know, you got moves like Queen E8 and Rook A7. I'm, I'm still kind of confused why Stockfish is, uh, you know, at one point even thought about that move. Um, you know, I think once it gets a little bit deeper, it's, it kind of, you know, turns more to Rook B8. Even then, I'm like, what are you, you know, what are we doing here? Uh, but all that to say, 
from a practical standpoint, this is just not great. It's just not great. One little slip up, like f6, which happened in the game, h6 happens, the bishop runs, h7 check, right? Another check, another check. This is not what we want, right? And Walter actually made a game out of this. He ended, uh, you know, he ended up, you know, continuing to play. He ended up losing in the end. Um, but he actually made a game out of this, which is impressive because this is just not a fun position to be in, right? I mean, you're down two points. You have a pawn one move away from promotion, two bishops and a queen right here next to your king. Um, you know, making this a game, bringing it to the end game, um, you know, it is good, right? In chess, we don't want to just give up when we're losing. We want to we want to fight. We want to try to see if we can squeeze a draw out or squeeze out some kind of comeback, right? But that's the first example. Notice when he castled kingside, White went, oh, okay, well, that king's that king's a target. Let's attack it, right? So that's the first, the first game. The second game we have here, right? So again, we have one, two, and three, okay? Uh, knight g7, this is all great. Notice now white is, you know, I mean, white hasn't even developed one of their bishops yet, and they're already making the king's side, uh, you know, a target. White continues to push like crazy. We got e6. Uh, you know, most of the time in the hippo, when they push in the center, you'll want to lock it up probably 90% plus of the time. And, uh, okay. Knight E4, Knight E7, and now white sacks on G5. Notice here, Walter has not castled King side, right? He's played Knight D7. He wasn't in a rush to just get his King castled as fast as he could. He continued in a hippo like fashion, right? With the correct moves to lock down white's attack, right? This is a two on two and notice we have a great clamp right great clamp with e5 and g5 really clamping down on that f4 square so f4 is going to be hard for white to get in here white ends up sacking what is the big difference here the big difference is that our king is on e8 and not g8 and this is a big big difference the game's continued with b6 white played e4 and okay we have nice e5 uh you know walter continued by taking on e4 and went on to win this game relatively quickly um, just past move 30. So, uh, yeah, I mean, this knight, uh, you know, attacking the bishop. And here, black just simply up two points of material. Now, after the move b6, some of you guys might be wondering, well, why didn't white just play h6? Well, in that case, we have bishop f6 now. Notice there's no h7 check anymore, right? There's no check against the king. There's no crazy mating ideas. In fact, this king's relatively safe right now, as weird as that sounds, right? Now, white does have a lot of space, right? They do have a pawn on h6, which is a little bit annoying, but we are up a piece for two pawns, which, in my book, is a big advantage. Um, you know, if, if white wants to take, that's great. We're going to take back with the knight, start to kind of unravel our position a little bit. If, you know, a move like bishop e3, let's play knight g6. Give our bishop room to run. Notice here, if white just kind of makes a move, we are threatening e4, right? Kicking this knight and actually just snatching off that g5 pawn. And the moment that the g pawn falls, the h pawn is gonna be weak as well, right? White's position here is somewhat falling apart. Okay, and going back to bishop e7, if white sees this, and they really just, you know, lock down that pawn on g5, there's some things we could do. Uh, one move that, you know, Stockfish thinks is really good is uh, knight f8, whole idea being that we're just kind of defending that knight, even bringing this knight to h7 and just adding even more pressure to g5, that's one way you can do it, just kind of lock up those pawns with those knights. Another way you could play here, which is probably my my favorite, is just knight c5, right? Just play a little bit more active. If something like castling queenside, you know, this is a good move. a5 is a good move. Um, you know, bishop g4 is an option as well. There's a lot of things that you could do here. Uh, but all that to say, black has a solid game here. There, there's not really an easy way for white to continue pushing these pawns. If anything, they're a target at the moment uh, because of this queen. And this bishop, you know, really aiming on g5. And our rook's still on h8, right? So until you move this rook, until you somehow get this rook out of the way, this this pawn's just not going to promote, right? It's just not. So um, that's kind of a before and an after. Notice here as well, our king. This is what really matters most, right? On top of our rook being on the promotion square, our king is not a target right now. White has no way to even get close to checkmate this king. There's just no way. Right, and this king could stay in the middle where it's safe right now, or we could even castle queenside in the future. Right, play move like bishop f5, play queen d7, castle queenside, get the heck out of there. Maybe bring our other rook to g8. Right, at some point, start to put pressure on that g5 pawn even more. So remember, if you're playing the hippo, right, if you're playing the hippo, wait until you got your full hippo setup to castle. Right, and if white, you know, white starts attacking you like crazy, 
you're going to be thankful that you didn't castle, right? Especially, you know, on the king side. You don't want to castle king side too fast because you're going to get attacked like crazy and you're going to go, gosh, why didn't I just stay in the center? Stay in the center for a while. If white attacks you on the king side, go ahead. We're not in danger, right? We're going to win a piece for a pawn because we had that whole h6, g5 idea, right? Um, just like Walter did here, right? h6, perfect, perfect move. Preparing g5. White here played g4. I'm, 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 I still think this is super weakening. Like, what does white get out of this? The only thing they get is a pawn that's defended, which, by the way, already is. And uh, on top of that, they just get a weak pawn. They just get a target, right? So that's not a great move. But Walter here playing e6 locks things up, develops his knight in a, in a natural hippo fashion. And, um, you know, white here desperate to make a break. They take on g5. But at that point, we just simply have an objectively better position. So shout out to Walter. Um, for kind of adjusting his approach, right? Not casting super fast. And um, again, just pull up the photo, right? I mean, this photo is just, I'm sorry. It's just, it's just crazy, right? So um, yeah, shout out to Walter. And let me guys, you know, let me know guys if, uh, if, if you guys can find me a pet hippo. Thanks for watching today's video. I wanted to give a big shout out to my Patreon supporters for the month of May in 2023. If you haven't checked out the Patreon before, make sure to go check it out. There's a lot of exclusive benefits that you gain by becoming a member. Again, thanks for watching today's video, and I'll see you in the next one.